G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. This here is my latest Saison, and that brew day video will be out soon. But while I was researching to write a new recipe, I had many discussions with friends and pro brewers about their approach. And one thing that kept coming up was diastaticus. If you're a beer lover or a brewer, you've probably heard the term diastaticus thrown around, but what exactly is diastaticus and how does it relate to Saison yeasts? Well, that's exactly what we're diving into today. We'll discuss what it is, how to handle it in your brewery, and an option to avoid it altogether. So stick around, because we're about to unlock some brewing science, and you might just learn something new about your favorite brews. Ah, spicy, fruity, it's just good. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever brewed a Saison and noticed that it kept fermenting longer than expected, dried out way more than anticipated, or even become overcarbonated in the bottle? Or you might have encountered Saccharomyces cerevisiae diastaticus. That's a mouthful. <laughs> it's a variation of the normal ale yeast. A fascinating yet sometimes problematic yeast strain. Today we're going to break down what diastaticus is, why it's so common in Saison yeasts, and how you can manage it in your brewing. What is diastaticus? Diastaticus is a variant of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. That's your normal ale yeast. But it has an extra trick up its sleeve. It can break down complex starches and dextrins that regular brewer's yeast cannot. It doesn't actually consume them directly, but it secretes an enzyme, glucoamylase, you might have heard of that before, that breaks down dextrins into smaller sugars that the yeast can then metabolize. This is due to the yeast having a gene called STA1. But this enzyme allows diastaticus positive yeast to keep consuming sugars long after primary fermentation would normally end. If this happens after packaging when the diastatic yeast are uninvited and uninspected, this additional fermentation can lead to overcarbonation and changes in flavour. Besides sensory impact, the higher alcohol can push the beer out of spec. Overcarbonated kegs may produce excess pressure and foam, and in the worst scenario, cans or bottles can explode. So let's see how that goes. The wife is not going to be happy about that. And this bottle of beer explodes while just sitting on a shelf. Why is diastaticus common in Saison yeasts? Saison yeasts, which originated from Belgian and French farmhouse brewing traditions, are well known for producing distinctive spicy, fruity, and sometimes funky flavors. They also thrive in warmer fermentation temperatures and tolerate high alcohol levels. Many of the Saison strains are diastaticus positive, meaning they naturally contain the ST1 gene. And this is why Saisons often reach very low final gravities, sometimes even below the 1.000. This extended fermentation can contribute to the signature dry finish and complex flavor profiles we associate with classic Saisons. Potential issues with diastaticus. While diastaticus can be great for some Saisons, it can be a problem in other beer styles if it unintentionally contaminates non-Saison batches. It can cause continued fermentation again in the kegs or the bottles and lead to that unwanted overcarbonation, unwanted off flavours and even the bottle bombs. Imagine popping open a bottle of your latest brew only to have it explode in your face because fermentation kept going even after you thought it had stopped. Contamination can occur through shared fermenters, tubing, or even during yeast propagation. How to manage diastaticus in brewing. So how can you harness diastaticus for great saisons while preventing it from wreaking havoc in other beers? There's some key tips. Know your yeast. Check if your chosen yeast strain is diastaticus positive. Many commercial yeast labs label this information and they, they really all should. Proper cleaning and sanitation. If you use diastaticus yeast, Thoroughly clean and sanitize your equipment to prevent cross-contamination. This yeast can be really hardy and it can survive on surfaces if not properly cleaned. On your beer stones, all that sort of thing. Take apart equipment regularly to thoroughly clean it and allow it to completely dry. 
and you're following beers, watch out for unusual characteristics that are not to style if cross-contamination was possible. It is important to keep track of your gravity readings and know where you should be with your chosen yeast. Gravity and attenuation monitoring. Expect Saison fermentations to go lower than usual. If you think your beer is finished, give it extra time to ensure all sugars are consumed. Bottle conditioning. If your bottle conditioning ensure proper priming sugar calculations and consider cold storage after allowing for the carbonation to slow down any residual activity. Genetic testing. Some breweries will use PCR tests to determine for diastaticus contamination in non-Saison beers. A European study found that of 52 confirmed events, 48 originated in-house. Of those, 70% were traced back to the bottling and canning lines. This is the area of the brewery that should receive additional cleaning after processing a beer fermented with a diastatic yeast, and it should be closely monitored. A non-diastaticus Saison option is Laumann Farmhouse Yeast. If you love brewing Saisons but want to avoid the unpredictability of diastaticus, there's good news. Laumann Farmhouse Yeast is a specifically selected Saison strain, that's a mouthful, that does not carry the ST1 gene, meaning it won't continue fermenting beyond the expected limits. It's in this and it's a beauty. This yeast still delivers the classic fruity, spicy and complex flavours of a traditional Saison, but without the risk of over attenuation or bottle bombs. It's a great choice for brewers looking to maintain control over their final gravity, so you know ex roughly exactly where it's going to finish compared to a diastaticus yeast, while still enjoying a farmhouse style character. So if you want a Saison yeast that ferments great with predictability while avoiding the risks of diastaticus, Lowerman Farmhouse is worth considering. To be honest, I, I wouldn't use anything else anymore. Uh, just out of my little home brewery, it's not worth the risk. Have you had any experiences, good or bad, with diastaticus yeast? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more brewing content. Until next time, keep brewing and keep experimenting. Cheers. I just want to say a big shout out to my patrons. Without them, this channel couldn't continue. Continue, please consider going and have a look at my Patreon channel. I can't wait for the Saison video to come out. I think you'll really love this beer. I won't, I say it's a modern Saison. It's a little bit of haze, there's a little bit of rye in it, a little bit of oats, uh, and some other hops and things, which you'll find out when you get the final recipe. Uh, it's not a Saison, a DuPont Saison, uh, but DuPont Saison is is not an old beer. It's it's sort of a, a mid-modern take on a Saison. The original Saisons were a lot more farmhouse, a lot more wild, had Brett in them and all these different funky things. The, the DuPont Saison is sterile in comparison, you know, the, it was very modernised for a brewery. My one here is a little bit more modern again, a little bit hoppy, I'd call it a hoppy Saison. It's got a little bit of rye in it for some extra spice and I use the Lalman Farmhouse Yeast and it's sensational, really easy drinking. It's not fermented out to 1.000, uh, I think mine went down to 1.010, so it's still got a tiny little bit of body in it. Nice bit of booze, nice bit of bitterness, hops, spice. <sighs> That's really nice. Cheers.